Hey everybody, burning the midnight oil at the creation station. Oh, how lovely. It's almost, gosh, it's 10.30 over here and my eyes are doing a number on me here, but I wanted to share one quick little production tip with you, which will make the MIDI side of a uh, beautiful classical sounding orchestration uh, a heck of a lot easier, especially when, can, when it comes to a harp. Now the harp is one of my favorite instruments here. I've got a patch here that you can see it's in contact, and I don't even know where I have it from. It might have been ported over from a Mach 5 library. It's got, as you can see here on the screenshot, one, two, three layers of velocity, and they have a nice character change from the softest to the hardest. But I found it very difficult to play, you know, specific scales, for example, something like harmonic minor or so, very, very evenly across the board. It required me to do a lot of editing of individual notes to get a beautiful run that starts with a soft note, gets stronger and stronger, and then maybe arcs back down to a soft note. And I found a very, very neat trick, something inside of contact that I think you're going to appreciate very much. It requires you to find a good harp sound and then copy what I'm doing over here. But here's what I've done. Take a look over here. See, this is the maximum velocity slider here. This is a, a preset in the script editor called Randomize and Change, and it's called Change Velocity right over there. I'm going to grab a curve that is slightly convex and I'm going to assign with hitting in my on my Mac keyboard. This is Control and Learn MIDI CC Automation. I'm going to move my foot pedal. Lo and behold, see, now there is my pedal. So that every note that comes in now will be played on whatever key I strike with the velocity that that slider determines. Now watch what happens if I play this harp um, manually here. It would be physically impossible for me to play that even in, in the softer velocities. Look, this is a half tone whole, scale, whole tone scale on, on a minimum velocity. Stays totally even. Why? Because I'm keeping the foot pedal down. So that means, you, as you can see on the screen, it shows very low uh, readout. And um, let's see, let's do, I'm going to do a gliss on the keyboard. And you can see at the end of the gliss, I brought the level back down. So I let it blossom up from, you know, foot pedal sort of in the upper position. So with very low CC numbers. And then I pressed it in as sort of halfway through the run. And then I let go again. Once again, let me do this for you. And again. So I never get this thing anymore that the highest note that I end up on gets just kind of sticks out like a sore thumb and I have to then go into the MIDI editor and edit all the notes out that are sort of kind of sticking out. And uh, this is a really nifty trick in contact with the fantastic scripting options lets you do this. Um, let's say, for example, if I were to play a scale like an um, F minor scale or arpeggio, just comes out of the, sort of emerges out of the softer sound. It's very hard to do this um, uh, playing on just on the keyboard without this feature. See how mellow it gets at the end. It's very, it's very difficult to play. But with this feature, CC11 converted over into velocity. That's a neat trick. And I think it's going to come to good use. Find a, a, any harp library that has several layers of velocity and then go in, once again here under presets, factory, slide down to the randomize and change, find change velocity and um, let this, oop, where were we? Let the maximum slider over here learn your foot pedal. And that's how it's done. Hope, hope you can find a, a use for this. Let me just play you a little bit in context what this sounds like in this particular production. Um, my curve was slightly convex here, about seven or six. Um, and let's take a look at the context. Here we go, here's the beginning. 
And watch how the harp kind of emerges rather than kind of sticking out like with too percussive a note. Here. Here we go. See, in that run alone, you can see that I pushed the volume pedal up, as you can see in the curve over here, as it rises. Um, and then falls again on the last notes in order to mellow them out. Once again. Mellower on the last note. Once again in context. I'm going to play you just a little bit. This is a passage of the song uh, uh, She, written by Charles Aznavour, which I'm preparing for one of my clients with a lush uh, orchestration. Here we go. There's only a vibraphone sitting on top. This is a crescendo done with the volume pedal. Same thing here. Watch the next one. It's very strong crescendo coming from soft to bright. So my left foot is constantly working. Very mellow cellos coming in here. So the harp was the solo instrument at this point. And then there is pianos taking over as solo instrument or center instrument. One more run. See, this particular run is uh, interesting to look at also because it kind of emerges out of the entire orchestral mid-range sweetness, the harmonic con um, convolution that's going on there. Look at it right here. So it's got the target note at the top. It's actually hard for a harp player to do this. I'm exaggerating this a little bit, but I want the harmonic note, bing, on that five note to stick out a little bit. Hence, the very strong crescendo here done with uh, control 11. And in my case, it's my foot pedal. That's how it's done. I hope that was sort of clear. Um, uh, please go try it out with uh, any any sound actually that you want to do this with whatever you want to sound even it could be also a celesta or it could be a vibraphone you could do it with pretty much every instrument so that you don't have to play the velocity so perfectly even on the keyboard which on a lighter keyboard i find particularly hard anyways that's it um i'm going to go to bed now i hope you guys have a great and creative day Signing out from the Creation Station is Stefan Oberhoff. And please subscribe to the channel. It would be really helpful. I want to bring a lot more videos out to you guys. Um, I'm doing about one a week now because I'm very busy producing, but I'm trying to keep it up because it's so much fun to share this and I'm learning so much from YouTube. So it's a good way for me to give back. So subscribing doesn't cost you anything. Quite the contrary. It will actually make sure that every time you, from that point on forward, you open up YouTube, you see things that you like in the first choices of the videos rather than things you have no interest in watching. Anyways, that's it. Once again, signing out. Stefan Oberhoff from The Creation Station. Take good care. Good night.